They are called 3TNG for tin, tantalum, tungsten and gold. They are widely used in our mobile phones and many other high-tech products. But these four minerals have a darker side. In several regions of the world, conflicts between armed groups involved in their illegal trade are a major cause of insecurity, poverty and human rights abuses. For the European Parliament, it's high time for action. The legitimate that the European Parliament has as a very important goal to break the link between the trade of minerals which are very important for our industries and the financing of conflict and degradation of human beings. Nous devons absolument mettre en place des réglementations qui nous garantissent que les produits que nous consommons sont des produits qui n'ont pas été complices de ces conflits dans les pays d'origine. As long ago as 2014, a voluntary due diligence system was proposed by the Commission to encourage larger European manufacturers to avoid conflict minerals. What has happened since then? The initial proposal of the European Commission was a little bit modest, so we had to uh, step up with this proposal. Ce qui a été obtenu, c'est que les entreprises dites du upstream, donc c'est-à-dire en amont de la chaîne, soient dans l'obligation de rentrer dans la due diligence. This means smelters and refiners, but also it means importers of minerals and metals. It's the upstream that we have to address because after the origins of the minerals cannot be recognized. Notre objectif est de faire en sorte que toute la chaîne soit propre et donc d'avoir un effet d'entraînement sur ce qu'on appelle le downstream, donc les entreprises de la fin de la chaîne, ce sont celles qui finalement vendent nos téléphones, nos tablettes et autres. Can the strategy succeed? What are the effects on the ground? To get answers, we visited a company that decided to apply the due diligence guidelines a few years ago. Fairphone uh, started as a campaign around conflict minerals and we decided to make our own products to be able to address the issues that we saw happening in industry. At a time when many manufacturers were simply boycotting the regions affected by conflict, the company chose a radically different approach. In those areas, a lot of people are very dependent on income from mining. It's the main part of their livelihoods, which is why we wanted to source from these areas and make this step to prove that it is possible to source from these areas in a more responsible way. It took years to set up certified supply chains. So what we do is that we engage with component manufacturers to understand the exact supply chain of a certain material and that way we're able to trace it up to the refiner. On the ground, concrete and sustainable results have gradually emerged. You can see that a lot of the conflict actors have moved out of a lot of types of mining, which actually enables communities to earn that income again. Another crucial question concerns the criteria with which the industry will have to work. On a travaillé avec des éléments de référence qui ont été émis par l'OCDE, qui leur dit voilà les questions que vous devez vous poser si vous êtes effectivement producteur, consommateur des 3TG. There are also other areas of concern for an industry that considers it has already made a considerable effort. Our industry uh, was already doing due diligence programs on a voluntary basis. How exactly these schemes will be recognized? If they are OECD compatible, if they uh, are fit for the purpose, then the European Commission will recognize the schemes. The majority of the smelters are based in Asia and they're not obliged also to follow these rules. If they want to be able to supply to the European market, they will have to uh, certify. Ça veut pas dire qu'on va régler tous les problèmes euh, de l'Afrique avec cette réglementation, mais en tout cas si on peut contribuer à arrêter de financer des groupes armés qui violent, qui tuent, qui exploitent, eh bien je pense que l'Europe aura gagné en faisant du commerce de valeur. Mm -hmm.